Good morning. Welcome to Victoria's Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. Now we are studying the law of faith. And we started talking about what faith is. Now, a simple definition means uh, faith means belief. Believe means confidence, persuasion, conviction, trust. Yesterday, we started talking about two kinds of faith. And the question is, what kind of faith are you using? One kind of faith is natural faith. The other kind is the God kind of faith. Natural faith believes what you can see and feel. It believes something based on natural or physical evidence. It believes physical evidence. Every person, every human being, even sinners, have the human or the natural kind of faith. And I use this example. You're using natural faith when you sit down in a chair. If you look at a chair and it looks steady and strong, you will sit down in it. Why? You have faith or confidence in the chair. You trust the chair to hold you. However, if you looked at that chair and it was missing two legs, you would not sit down. If it had only two legs, you would not sit down. You would have no confidence in the chair or no faith in the chair because of what you see. But the God kind of faith believes what you cannot see or feel, believes what you have no evidence of only because God has said it based on what God said or based on God's word. So the God kind of faith is faith based on God's word or based on what God has said to you. And that can either be in his written word or by his spirit. When his spirit speaks to you, you believe what he said with no physical evidence or proof that can be seen. Now, I said yesterday also, do you believe in heaven? Most all Christians believe in heaven. But why do you believe in heaven? Have you seen heaven? Have you been there? Have you walked on the streets of gold? Have you touched the tree of life? Why do you believe it's real? Because God's word tells you it is true. And you believe what God said is true. Well, in that case, you are using the God kind of faith. Now we see the God kind of faith introduced to us by Jesus in Mark eleven twenty two, And we went over this yesterday that the New Testament was written in Greek. And if you have a study Bible, your study Bible might say, in the margin or footnotes, the literal translation of Mark eleven twenty two. Now your regular translation will read, have faith in God, Jesus answered. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. But we see that the literal Greek translation is not in God, but of God. So you change the word in to of, and that is proven out by the context of the scripture. You see, we always have to interpret scripture in light of its context in the context or the setting that it is written. And what is the context of this verse? Jesus had cursed the fig tree. And in verse 21, Peter remembered that he had cursed the fig tree and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. Jesus used this opportunity to begin a a teaching lesson about the God kind 
of faith. Now, remember, who is it that Jesus is talking to? And this is one of the rules for Bible interpretation. You need to know this. When you read the Bible, in order to interpret scripture correctly, you need to interpret it in the context that it was written. And that means also asking who is he talking to? Who is God talking to? Who is Jesus talking to? Or who did the talking? In this situation, Jesus is talking and he is talking to Peter and the other disciples. So in other words, Jesus is talking to Jews. The Jews are the people of God, the nation of God. For millennia already, at least 2000 years, they were the people of God. And you don't need to go tell a Jew, believe in God. That would have been ridiculous for Jesus to tell the Jews, you need to believe in God. Go up to a Jew and say, hey, Jew, you need to believe in God. Let's say, I do believe in God. I am. We are the people of God. We are the nation of God. They were very proud about being the people of God. So it was pointless to tell them to believe in God. That right there is evidence that that's not what Jesus said. As the Greek literally says, he said, have the faith of God. Because now Jesus is beginning to teach Peter about the God kind of faith. So in translating Mark eleven twenty two, you could say, have the faith of God. Jesus answered, have the faith of God, have the faith of God. Well, today we could also call it have God's faith. God's faith is the same as the faith of God. Like you wouldn't say, this is the dog of John. No, this is John's dog. Well, in the same way, God's faith or the God kind of faith. So Jesus is beginning to show them a kind of faith that is different than anything they have ever known. And Jesus is beginning to explain to them one of the spiritual laws of the kingdom, the law of faith, how Jesus operates, how Jesus cursed the fig tree, healed the sick, raised the dead and walked on water. This is how he does it. This is not natural faith. So Jesus is really telling the people, Peter and the others, this is not just natural faith. This is God's kind of faith. But notice we said this earlier on previous broadcasts. Jesus did not tell Peter. Of course, the the fig tree withered. I'm the son of God, but don't you try it. No. Jesus was then going on to tell Peter how Peter could do the same thing. And Jesus said in verse 23, I tell you the truth. If anyone says to this mountain, the King James says, whosoever, are you an anyone? Are you a whosoever? Yes, you are. You are. That means you can do the same thing. But Jesus is explaining how the God kind of faith works. He said, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. He's saying, this is how the God kind of faith works. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him 
so that your father in heaven may forgive you your sins. So right here, Jesus is giving a lesson about the God kind of faith. He turned to Peter and say, look, Peter, this is how the law of faith works. The God kind of faith works. This is not normal human faith. This is God's faith, but you can do it too. If you learn how to do this and if you will believe and not doubt and say it, you can get the same results. Hallelujah. Now we'll obviously come back to these verses as we study this God kind of faith more, but we see now that God believes what he does not see in Genesis one. God saw the darkness, but he said, light be and light was. So Jesus is telling us, have the faith of God. Now, as we said yesterday, that's not a suggestion. That's an order. That's a command. God is expecting his people, his children to have his kind of faith. That means it is possible. Don't think, oh, I could never do that. Yes, you can. If Jesus said, have the God kind of faith, then you can. He doesn't tell you to do something that you can't do. And we are supposed to do it. Hallelujah. Now, we as Christians need to develop in this area of faith. Everybody is developed in natural faith. We we live in the natural world every day. And from the time we were born, we're using the natural kind of faith. But we must transfer and change over to the kingdom of God and the God kind of faith in order to get the God kind of results, supernatural results, supernatural answers to prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We must use the God kind of faith. Now, let me give you another illustration. The God kind of faith believes what you cannot see or feel based alone on what God has said. Simply God said it. And that's all you've got is his word. And you believe that more than you believe physical evidence. Hallelujah. Now, first of all, you must understand that the God kind of faith is a choice. It's a choice. Let let me show you this example. Let's say in your left hand, you've got an x-ray or a blood test from the doctor and the doctor's written diagnosis to your physical condition says that you have cancer. That's you're holding that in your left hand in your right hand. You're holding the Bible and in first Peter two twenty four. It says, by his stripes, you were healed. So in the left hand, you're holding the doctor's evidence, the x-rays, the blood tests. Not only that, but you could be feeling the symptoms in your body. But in your right hand, You are holding on to the Bible and you've got the Bible open to first Peter 224 and you're reading first Peter 224, which says by his stripes, you were healed. Notice you are standing in the middle between the doctor's report and the x-rays and the tests in your left hand. God's word in your right hand, you are standing in the middle. At this point, you have a choice. 
It is a choice. And it is as much as a, of a choice is what I mean is you have to make a decision. Whose report are you going to believe? You know, some of us remember that old song. Whose report will you believe? I will believe the report of the Lord. But that's true. You've now got a choice. You've got physical evidence in the left hand. You've got God's word in the right hand. And according to God's word, you are healed. But by every physical symptom and evidence, you are sick. Now you've got a choice and a decision. Whose report are you going to believe? Which word will you believe? You know, you must understand it is your choice. Have you ever heard people say it or people talk about it? I just can't believe that. I just can't believe that. Maybe you've shared the gospel with an unbeliever, maybe an atheist, and they just say, I just can't believe in God. I just can't believe that Bible. Or you tell somebody something and they say, I can't believe that. Do you realize, I want you to know today, that that is not true. It is not true that you can't believe, that you cannot believe something. Why? Because believing is always a choice and a decision. You can believe anything you choose to believe. If you wanted to, you could believe that the sky is green and grass is blue. And you can go out your door today and say to everybody, oh, isn't it a beautiful green sky today? And isn't the grass so blue? People are going to look at you and say, you're crazy, but you can believe it if you choose to. You could believe you're an astronaut on the moon walking down the street. People think you're crazy, sure, but you can if you choose. Because believing is a choice. You must remember that. Believing is always a choice. So when you've got the doctor's report, the blood tests, the x-rays, and your own physical symptoms that you feel so strongly, and then on the other hand, in the right hand, you've got God's word and promise says, by his stripes, you were healed, quoting Isaiah 53 that says you are healed. You've got a choice. You can believe you're healed as much as you can believe you're sick. You can. You can. There is no such thing as can't believe. No such thing. You believe whatever you choose. That's why, you know, when presented with, uh, when people, unbelievers are presented with the gospel, or they're presented with Islam or Hinduism or Buddhism. They choose which one they want to believe. They say, oh, I don't want to believe in Jesus. I'd rather believe in Buddha. They've made a choice because there's no such thing as can't. In the same way, you have to choose to believe you are healed when all the symptoms And evidence in the physical realm look like you're sick. Also, financially speaking, let's take another example. Let's say you have an ATM debit card and you go to the ATM machine, you put your debit card in there and you try to withdraw $20, but the the ATM machine says your account is empty and it gives you, it prints out a receipt or a ticket and it shows you your bank account balance is zero, zero balance. So according to that receipt, 
you have zero balance, no money in your bank account. Then you stick your hand in your pocket and there's no money in your pocket. You open up your wallet, turn it upside down and nothing comes out because there is nothing in your wallet. So by all physical evidence, you have no money, no money at all. Your bank account, your pocket, your wallet, all zero, empty, nothing. However, you go to Psalm 23. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you like Psalm 23? In Psalm 23, God said that in verse 5, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Overflows. It does not say my cup is half full or just has a few dregs at the bottom or half full, three quarters full. It does not even say my cup is up to the rim, filled to the rim. No. It actually says my cup overflows. Now that's talking about your supply. What do you have? How much do you have? He said, you have overflow. Praise God. And then you go over to Psalm 34. Psalm 34. Verse 9. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. 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 In 2 Corinthians 9, it says, we are made rich in every way. Amen. Made rich in every way. So that we can be generous on every occasion. Hallelujah. So if God's word, that, that's in 2 Corinthians 9, 11, You are made rich in every way. So that you can be generous on every occasion. So Psalm 23 says your cup overflows. Psalm 34 says you lack nothing. And second Corinthians nine eleven says you are rich in every way. That includes money, obviously in every way. But your bank account, your pocket and your wallet say you have no money. So in the left hand, you've got the receipt from the ATM that says zero balance, you've got an empty wallet and an empty pocket. In the right hand, you've got God's word says you are rich in every way. Your cup overflows. Now you notice that you are standing in the middle betwixt two. You are standing in the middle. At this point, you have a choice. Whose report will you believe? Will you believe the empty bank account, the empty pocket and the empty wallet and say you have no money? Or do you believe alone what God has said when there's no physical evidence that you can see and say, I'm rich. I'm rich. My cup overflows. I lack nothing. I abound in every good thing. I mean, the scriptures go on and on and on about we have abundance of supply in every way. God says you're rich. You are standing in the middle betwixt two. Whose report will you believe? Natural faith is is the one that believes the doctor's report, believes the ATM receipt or the empty wallet. That's natural faith, believing the physical evidence that is seen and felt. The God kind of faith believes what God said is true when you cannot see it, when you cannot feel it. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the God kind of faith. That means you believe 
you are healed when you feel sick. You believe you are rich when you have no money. You believe you have joy when you feel sad. You believe that you have the victory when it looks like you're defeated. You believe what God said when it looks like the opposite. Now, there is, you don't need this kind of faith if everything looks good. If you feel great and healthy, if you've got bunches of money in the bank and everything's going well, there is no need for this God kind of faith. You can live by natural faith if you see the money in the bank, feel the healing in your body. You need the God kind of faith when you can't see it and when you don't feel it. That's when you need it the most and you've got to use it. You must use it to get the victory. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And it's the God kind of faith that will give you the victory every time because it's a spiritual law. Now, thank you for joining me today. We're out of time. We're going to continue our study of the law of faith tomorrow. And remember, God loves you. You are blessed and highly favored by the Lord.